What you're looking at here are hairs on the upper lip of a person. The skin of your lips is incredibly thin as it has only 3 to 5 cellular layers compared to the face skin which typically has up to 16 layers. Because of so few layers and the blood vessels which are so close to the surface, your lips appear pink or red. This view shows the cracked lip surface with sweat and oil droplets. A blood filled tick swollen in size after feeding on the blood of its mammal host. This is a common sheep tick, the principal vector of Lyme disease in Europe. It is common in the damp underbrush of European woods and attacks various domestic and wild animals, including dogs and humans. It carries the bacterium that causes Lyme disease. These are silicon pyramids covered with perovskite. Scientists are currently doing research on silicon and perovskite combined solar cells to maximize the conversion of light rays into electrical power in the most cost-efficient way. Just recently, researchers from Switzerland integrated perovskite cells directly on top of a standard silicon-based cells, obtaining a record efficiency of 25.2%. Their production method is promising because it would add only a few extra steps to the current silicon cell production process and the cost would be reasonable. A Ladybird in Flight this is a seven-spot ladybird beetle flying over a flower. The outer wings of the ladybird are strengthened into a hard covering called the elytra to protect the delicate flight wings found beneath. These elytra are raised in flight, while other transparent hind wings propel the insect. Seven black spots are found on the red wing covers of this ladybird. The red and black colors are a warning to predators, because this beetle is able to squirt distasteful fluids. Celery stalks have numerous vascular bundles which act as a transport system. Shown here is a single vascular bundle in a celery stalk. The vascular bundle contains two types of conductive tissue, phylum and xylem. Phylum, seen here in the top area, is tissue that transports larger organic molecules through the plant. It is composed of several cell types. Xylem is tissue that is responsible for transporting water and nutrients through the plant. Xylem consists of a variety of specialized water-conducting cells known as tracheary elements. Surrounding the vascular bundle are supporting plant cholenchyma cells. Is this the evidence for life on Mars? This tube-like structure on a meteorite originated from Mars. Structures such as this have been interpreted as possibly being microfossils of primitive bacteria-like organisms which may have lived on Mars more than 3.6 billion years ago. The meteorite called ALH84001 was discovered in Antarctica in 1984 and has since been studied at NASA's Johnson Space Center and at Stanford University. The larva of a brown china mark, a species of moth. This species of moth is found in Europe and across the Pale Arctic to the Russian Far East and China. These moths are unusual in that their larvae are entirely aquatic and have tracheal gills. While in water, they protect their soft caterpillar bodies with bits of leaves which they weave together. This is a section through the parotid duct, a long excretory duct where saliva is drained out from the parotid gland into the mouth. Clearly visible are the honeycomb-like cells of the epithelium and three nuclei on the edge. The duct pierces the buccinator muscle then opens into the mouth on the inner surface of the cheek, usually opposite the maxillary second molar. The parotid gland is a major salivary gland in many animals. In humans, the two parotid glands are present on either side of the mouth and in front of both ears. They are the largest of the salivary glands contain enzymes and proteins and facilitate mastication and swallowing to begin in the digestion of starches. 
a large number of gingivitis bacteria in the gums of a human mouth. The most common form of gingivitis and inflammation and redness of the gum tissue is in response to bacterial overgrowth that causes plaques to form on the teeth. A black fly larva Holding two fan-like nets in a water current, larva of the black fly waits until tiny animals or food particles get caught. Then it draws the net down towards its mouth, where thick tufts of setae comb out the nourishment. A very well-mannered mode of dining compared to the adult which drinks blood. Corrosion on Copper Bond Pad A Mount Wellington Peppermint This eucalyptus species dominates the dry forests of Australia. To protect itself from desiccation, extreme cold and frost, a layer of wax coats the surface of its leaves. These evergreen plants also secrete oils and are used in herbal medicine. The picture shows the leaf underside coated with wax and leaf pores. A Sweet Potato A section through the nucleus of a kidney cell. The cell nucleus contains the cell's genetic information in the form of DNA. Here the DNA is complexed with proteins to form chromatin, which are the light brown structures in this image. Surrounding the nucleus are mitochondria, which supply the cell with energy. The surface of a contact lens. The thin plastic lens placed over the front of the eye to provide focus correction for people with imperfect eyesight. This is a salmon egg infected with Saprolegnia parasitica. The fungus causes saprolegniosis or water mold disease, which affects wild and cultured freshwater fish and fish eggs worldwide. The disease is characterized by abundant mycelial growth on the egg surface, first established on dead eggs and then extending to neighboring healthy eggs. In fish, the fungus invades the skin of the head or fins with subsequent spread over the entire body. The antenna of a European wood ant. The food of this species of ant consists mainly of insects, honeydew, and other sweet juices such as nectar or tree sap. This is a tendon showing bundles of collagen fibers. The parallel alignment of the fibers make tendons inelastic but flexible. Tendons attach muscle to bone. A Solomon's seal sawfly larva. The larval stage of Solomon's seal sawfly can completely defoliate polygonatum species and hybrids by early summer. The fully fed larvae then go into the soil where they overwinter and pupate in the following spring. Defoliated plants will survive but many produce reduced growth in the following year. These are the pollen grains of an anthurium flower, which has dropped from the spadix onto the brightly colored spade of the plant. The spadix is typically a type of spike inflorescence which is surrounded by a leaf-like bract known as a spade. So the flower of the anthurium is a spadix with a large colorful spade around it. The surface of a dollar bill under scanning electron microscope.
the surface of a primula varis or cowslip petal. In this image, we can see the yellow conically shaped shells of the primrose flower's petal along with the trichomes which are the brown multicellular hair. Flowers and leaves of the primrose have medicinal qualities. They are used as a salve to treat inflammation and a tonic for coughs and common colds. These are fossilized teeth of conodonts, which are an extinct group of agnathon, jawless vertebrates resembling eels. They existed in the world's oceans for over 300 million years, from the Cambrian to the beginning of the Jurassic. For many years, they were known only from their tooth-like oral elements found in isolation, called conodont elements. Conodont elements are widely used as index fossils, fossils used to define and identify geological periods. Knowledge about their soft tissues remains limited. These rod-shaped structures are metal-reducing bacteria. These extremophile bacteria are able to convert toxic metals and compounds such as uranium, chromium, and technetium into water-insoluble forms. This ability could one day be used to clean contaminated groundwater. The whitish discoloration on the surface of some chocolate confections stored for long periods of time under unfavorable conditions is called a bloom. Sugar bloom develops by sugar recrystallizing on the surface of chocolate due to moisture. Fat bloom consists of fat crystals developing from cocoa butter used to make chocolate, particularly if the chocolate is stored at an elevated temperature. Both kinds of bloom differ in the appearance of the crystals.